Ooh, welcome back, Daddy. ladies and gentlemen. Game three of this best of five series between Scythe and RRQ for the Beyond the Radiant Summit inaugural Nick. is now underway. We're well into the semifinals. I am Zyori, and now joined by Lysander for game three. What's the good word, Lysander? How you feeling on this fine day? Well, well. I'm, I'm kind of tired, tired kind of busy, a long, long day. day. I have a 50 oh, word essay queued, queued up for up tomorrow. For tomorrow. Right, hold on, hold on one second. I'm getting some mad echo here. Let me turn my voice volume down. All right, try it again, buddy. Hello. Oh, like I said, um, yeah, Much like I said, okay. long day. <laughs> long day. <laughs> have a 50 word essay coming up, so Jeez. yeah, I have that on my mind. Oh no. But otherwise, it's all good. It's a, it's a good day. I'm glad to hear it. I've, Did you watch I've been any a little bit of this series on the? I've been a little bit uh, on the Slack side for casting, so glad to be back at it. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here to keep me company. Did you watch any of the uh, the, the first two games of this best of five? Um, I caught a little bit of the second game. Um, okay. But otherwise, um, I, I heard that, I from what I hear in the second game, it looked to be a little bit of a comeback game. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, was, it went a little bit bad for Scythe for a while. And then it got good. So. <laughs> yes, indeed. It certainly did get good. Now, Lycan has been kind of the, the big deal in this series. He's gotten through the initial bans both times, and both times RRQ have picked him up. And here we'll see Lycan not banned, and um, RRQ are going to switch it up. They won't grab Lycan this time because it really hasn't worked well for them. So I, I like the way that Scythe have drafted this where they're like, you know, you want Lycan? Take him because you don't know how to play him. They just haven't really found a way to make their Lycan super impactful. So uh, this Lycan did lose a lot in the Star Letter series, so yeah. there's that. Yeah, there's Five that. So, I don't, they just couldn't really find a way to the last game in particular. It started out so so poorly for RQ. They did a solo mid tiny who got pooped on by Miracle's Radiant Weaver. Then they pulled a rotation and tried to put Lycan in mid, and it looked like uh, Scythe was just going to run away with it. But then they just kind of fed the tiny, and he got like five kills back to back. And all of a sudden, Tiny had Arcane Boots, Blink Dagger, and was just he was throwing the poo. And then Scythe just kind of took it in the end with superior uh, decision making as a team. But uh, was an interesting game nonetheless. We'll see Centaur for the first time in this series. Now he was banned out the last two games, and Scythe will first pick him. And they grab the Shadow Shaman. A value support pick went on the dire side. Those remaining. wards plus Roche equals easy Aegis, right, Lysander? Five seconds well, remaining. well, I guess so, but you do need to get your... You still need a little bit more heroes than that. I mean, Shadow Shaman is definitely a good one. Uh, really it does take down Roshan a lot quicker. But we'll see. Shadow Shaman is something that I don't really like so much because of how fragile he is. But then again, some people play him well. Same way they play a Crystal Maiden well. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in position and well, not get themselves caught out. Uh, but RRQ have not actually casted Ten this new team before. I, I know Don Shuan, um as a player. Um, we speak a lot sometimes on, on Steam. But apart from that, I don't really know the rest of his team that well. So forgive me if I make any wrong calls here. But okay. Asian Apparition and Puck... Uh, they seem to be your good old 1-2 uh, combo, the Coil and Ice Blast follow-up. So This is the it, third time in this series of three games so far that RRQ have picked Puck. Uh, first game, it was a Don Juan Puck mid. Uh, last game, it was NFR playing Puck in the off lane. And we'll see how it goes here. It could be either or, but they, they really value the Fairy Dragon. Yeah, they're... I mean, it's not a bad, it's not a bad hero. I mean, you can't blame them uh, for picking that up. It is... Very strong. It usually fits into most lineups, I feel. I don't think there is a single lineup where you could just pick a puck up early on and say it's bad. Uh, unless you have a bad puck player, and that is when it gets real mean. But how's the puck been playing? Is he playing has he been playing good? It's Don Schwan on the puck, right? Um, He's the mid well, player. He was he played puck solo mid in the first game, but then it was Don Juan Tiny solo mid in the second game and NFR played him played Reserve puck in the time. off lane. So they've They've done both. It's it's really hard to say whether or not he'll be solo mid or if he'll be uh, in the off lane. But I, I would I would assume it's a Don Juan puck unless Scythe pick like a TA or some sort of a hard counter and they want to put him in the off lane, in which case they may give Don Juan something else. Uh, hopefully for us. Um, he plays well, you know, doesn't confuse us with too many weird picks. Scythe, I don't know, Miracle... Like I said many times before in the cast, he always finds some way to get to your towers, uh, one way or the other. I think the previous game was something a little bit away from this, but Miracle loves to play push. Yes. Uh, is, he, 
Is he Mikasa? Yeah, he's Mikasa. Okay. Yes, yes, that is that is Miracle. It was confusing in the first game. I kept referring to him as Mikasa and Invoker, and I, I assumed it was Miracle, Hopefully. but I didn't want to miscall it, and then I checked, and yeah, it, it is him, so... Nothing. Fans were very sad at first. They were just like, is that... Is Miracle gone? What happened to my Miracle? I got some angry tweets. People were very distraught. Thought people were going to start throwing babies out of windows, man. It was it was serious. That's serious. It, it was getting serious, man. People get heated on Twitter. Apparently, I accidentally said Scepter instead of Scythe of Ice or something, and everyone lost their biscuits. Oh, was, oh I heard that. I think it was the other way around. Uh, yeah. You said uh, you were <laughs> getting Scythe. Uh, Scythe Tiny isn't the worst on the, on the sixth slot, I guess. Yeah. But The team's uh, name is Scythe. Come on. It's, it's hard. It's confusing. It messes with my dyslexia a little bit. So uh, what are you uh, going to do? Yes, pity poor Zayori. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Scythe will grab the Enchantress, another hero that they've run quite a bit uh, in this series. So, yeah, they like to push. I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head. That's been kind of the name of the game for them so far, it seems. Well, um, I don't know about the live stealer pick. I guess it's good. I'm not sure if Untouchable does bypass, uh, I mean... Is it bypassed by Rage? Hmm. Uh, the chat could let me know. That'd be good. But yeah, and actually, I I just tweaked my set. I think my uh, man, stupid Skype. It changed all my settings around, and I think I sound normal now. Y- y'all have to keep me informed. I'm either I was either way too quiet, and now I might be way too loud, or I've come back to normal. But I think uh, I think calling Lysander messed with my audio levels a little bit. I'm not casting from the studio, so oh. um, you on? No, no. Gods was casting, and um, oh yeah, it's oh man. All right. Is it the ghetto room? It's not ghetto, it's my bedroom, Lysander. Come on, be nice. Oh. No, because there was this one time LD was saying uh, he cast it from a ghetto setup. Ten so I assume you room. guys have a ghetto room. So I'm not sure. Maybe it was the... He, maybe, cupboard, he uh, might have just been talking about his own bedroom, to be honest. That's that's our ghetto our ghetto setup, is our bedrooms. I, I know there's a little room under the stairs, so some cup... Uh, <laughs> cup of, <laughs> oh, yeah, the like, Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Yeah, the, the yeah, Harry Potter room. The Harry Potter, that's in Brian's that. bedroom. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were bunking in with him. But yeah. yeah, Nature's Prophet, there you go. You're red. Uh, very remaining. miracle-ish. And we have that stamp of red um, seal of time. approval here. And Nature's Prophet, he's kind of good against uh, Lifestealer if you manage to ground sprout. But it's uh, it's quite a catch. And if he gets calling blade, then it gets tough. But in the late game, it'll be pretty good. And Nature's Prophet is one of those heroes that help you af- avoid fights push early if enchantress but you can also avoid fights if you want it and on top of that i think it'll be a really good pickup for rq as well so mm-hmm. why not pick it up now Five because seconds, well the aa really? plus the wrath of nature could potentially be quite the team fight presence uh but scythe Five had to pick up real fast they really? banned sniper what hmm i'm not really I, sure what to make of that i i don't think sniper was intentional to be honest um i could be wrong i've not seen rq play but you own one or run aggressive Rubik Lifestealer engine operation if you can. I mean, I guess they can because there's an Enchantress, so you will be facing a dual lane in the early stages. Yeah. So she gets level 2 3. And it's really strong against Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman does not fare well uh, against Lifestealer mm-hmm. of all people. And I guess it's good, but Five seconds I don't know about the sniper. Sniper seems pretty ass to me. So in this lineup, he's a good hero, but in. Other lineups, uh, yeah. I would say sniper he's, ban. Maybe he just panicked. I don't think he's a bad hero, but he really has to be fit into specific niche lineups and usually works well where other teams don't have a lot of really aggressive gankers. And I, I don't think he would have been particularly good here, but also RRX just have a really squishy roster. If they had picked up the sniper, that's I mean, that means Life Stealer is also their their carry and kind of their front liner. And I, I don't know. I I agree. I would not have predicted a sniper final pick. And there you go. R R Q they'll grab the timber saw, and that seems That'd to make a little more sense. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So good against the centaur and also gives them a nice tanky front liner, but puts a lot of eggs in that life stealer basket. He's got to carry hard. Alright, so people say you're touchable with magic immunity, so I guess uh, magic immunity does uh, make Enchantress touchable. So there's that. And Central Wall Runner, of course, uh, countered up by Lifesteal and Timbersaw. So Ten I like this kind of counter picking coming up from Rex or RRQ. We'll see what Miracle does decide Five to pick up. I assume his Naga is banned. Yeah, his Naga is banned. And so looking at the lanes now, we need another hard lane carry. Uh, Void is banned. Mirana? Uh, 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 
I don't know. I mean, Sprout Arrow is cute, but doesn't work on Life Stealer. So. Hey, they've got some shackles. Uh, they have shackles, but Sprout doesn't work either against Timbersaw, Puck, or the Life Stealer. So, I don't know where he's thinking of this. He's picking it up himself. So, it might be a farming centaur, and we have hmm. because uh, we have Miracle on the middle lane. This because yeah. I think. But yeah, Miracle is probably gonna take mid. Mid Mirana does okay against a puck. Uh, if you get good arrows, you know those type, uh, those type of arrows that play on your human reactions. I think that's gonna be okay. The puck, if he gets hit by an arrow, he gets hit by an arrow. It doesn't matter if he is an escape artist, he still dies. So and it's pretty squishy as well. Easy yeah. to kill if you do get the nuke damage that Mirana offers across. But otherwise, oh, I think RQ has got a better lineup in this. And Scythe will have to really impress to win this game. Yeah, I, I agree. I think RQ have a easier to execute lineup and just a little bit more straightforward, well-rounded. You've got your Life Stealer and you've got your uh, your Timber Saw here. Now, if Scythe end up doing a tri lane around this Centaur, I actually sort of like it here because wow, Centaur okay. does not pair well. Huh? Why is Don Shuan actually um, orbing twice here? I don't know why he orbs twice. Wasted all of his mana. <laughs> yeah. It's all his mana. Maybe he just wants to ward the jungle, which Miracle does not want to happen, I guess. Freedom? Yeah, they're going to ward his jungle now. They're going to de ward it, I feel. Yeah, their sentry wards on the Shaman. So Chibix should know that there's shenanigans. Uh, a little bit of shenanigans is happening, and we'll see if they do get the de ward in time. And now he's going to head back right to base. Don Shuan's out of mana. So. Yeah. Some next level strats. I, I think he'll have enough time to get back to lane in time. But uh, yeah, anyway, I, I, I think it's it's kind of weird from Scythe, the way they have this set up. But it will be an off-lane Nature's Prophet, it looks like. And that's that's good. Centaur, not usually a tri-lane hero, but he really does not lane well against Timbersaw. That's a really one-sided matchup for the Timber. So putting Nature's Prophet yeah, against the Timber is so good. I, yeah. I like this because if you put a carry, normally carries are pretty helpless in a dual lane situation, which will be because the Enchantress will be locked down a little bit. It looks like they're not de-warding, so they didn't see this happening. So Enchantress is going to be pretty crippled in the early stages of the game, and you're not going to have your proper tri-lane with the Enchantress creep aggression here. Mm -hmm. And unless she gets a really lucky creep like a Sensor in this medium camp uh, or a, big, a nice creep here in this large camp, I guess Dire Jungle is good that way. But yeah. unless she gets some good ones, uh, it's going to be pretty pressured uh, in the early stages. But now they have Timbersaw. And Timbersaw, yes, he's good against the Sensor. But if he gets burst down by the Shaman, Shock, Shackle, yeah. Double Edge, Hoof Storm combo, it's a lot of magical bursts. So yeah. You have, to be, you have to be very careful when dealing against Ooh, the Sensor. And in Chantress? Sensor, yeah. So yeah. you get Sensor as well. So it's very lucky to get this creep. So many Centaurs in this game. So all right, let's introduce these rosters pretty quickly. Here on the Dire side, we've got Team Scythe. They are up 2-0 in this best of five series. It will be Mikasa, a.k.a. Miracle, playing in the off lane here with uh, the Murana on the bottom lane. Hana will be solo mid on the Nature's Prophet. And up top, that means we've got a pseudo tri lane here. Chibi X will be on the Shadow Shaman. He'll be supporting Polison on the Centaur War Runner. And it will be uh, X Freedom, tagged up as the Infinity Sign on the Enchantress. And he'll find a Seder Tormentor as well. So even though his uh, camps have been blocked here, he's still gotten pretty lucky, and he'll smoke up with his buddy Chibi, and it looks like they're headed towards the mid lane here, Lysander. Yeah, uh, do you introduce RRQ yet? Not yet, but we'll have to wait until this gank, uh, maybe not. Uh, no, they're wrapping around to get Timbersaw, yeah. and there's a little bit of harassment, Pelosan, uh, gonna do some damage, and Timbersaw doesn't get the, the willing death early on anyway, so it's not really that big a deal. Uh, against the Centaur early on, and oh, NFR on the Timber Saw, he might get caught out. Here comes the Zoo, and he is in a lot of trouble. There is his Timber Chain. The Hoof Stump timed perfectly, and that's your first blood. Double edge, smacks right across. To make yep. Centaur grabs that bonus gold. A nice, easy gank to get things started, and well, Scythe, they're off to the races. Just perfectly executed, wrapped around the tower right as the creeps were pushing in, and not much the Timber Saw could do. He tried to Timber Chain, but. The shackles were there to interrupt him, and now they'll walk away one kill richer, and they'll also be able to do a fair bit of damage to this tower. In the mid lane, though, Gehenna, he's playing on the Rubik here. Let's introduce our Radiant side. We've got RRQ, and in the bottom it will be Koala on the position one life stealer, and ooh, Timber Saw, almost initiated on up top. He'll be played by NFR in the solo top lane, and already struggling. He did concede that first blood. Boo Boo on the support Ancient Apparition down here in the bottom lane. Rubik, played by Gehenna, is invisible at the moment, trying to support mid. And of course, it is Don Juan on the solo mid puck. The hero that RRQ have been pri uh, prioritizing quite heavily in this series. They've played him in all three matches.
Yeah, and I like to see him in Nature's Prophet. It always gives me that little bit of hope Dyer's that it will become a Dagon. So. <laughs> I mean, they are one Radio's game ahead. So. Uh, two, games two games ahead. Two so. games ahead. They're one game I from sealing the deal. I love to see a Dagon hyper aggression kind of ganking Prophet. That would be hilarious. Yeah, uh, but we'll possible. have to see. We'll have yeah. to see. Uh, Rana does join him here. The leap arrow didn't really work out. Like I said, Puckin's not the easiest guy to gank, especially with Sprout. Uh, not your most, not your most uh, reliable disable here. So Miracle is gonna waste a lot of time. He's only level two. He's got his boots up. Maybe he picks up a bottle. I don't think Nature's Prophet will really need it. Uh, but overall, Don Shuan is actually on par with the Nature's Prophet here, and the Trians are more annoying than you know. Actually, they're they're like melee creeps. So if they don't tell me what I know, Lysander. I'm I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was just a but, funny, like, <laughs> never mind. Sorry, that was a lame joke. You're right, though. Don Juan doing very well, despite all of these triads here in the mid lane. Yeah, they're like melee creeps in terms of damage, <laughs> and here comes a wraparound gank. The arrow could fly here to make this potentially disastrous. Here comes Hannah. Without looking at his map, he's going to get caught out. The cold snap, I think he will die before any support can be given, and Don Juan steals the last hit with an easy orb, and that will slow down the Dagon. No, it's a Midas. Yeah. Shame on you, Hannah. Shame on you. Go for an ult and then get my hopes up. And... It looks like Chibi will wrap around to the top lane, though. He's got an illusion rune, and I think they want to pick on this timber saw a little bit more. There's no tower, so NFR actually pretty that far up. Shackle. They don't even need it to interrupt the uh, timber chain. They'll have plenty of damage. There's the hoof stomp, and nothing the timber saw can do. Supports wanting to rotate, but they won't get there in time. That'll make it two to one as uh, Scythe get another kill up on the board. But for RRQ, not all hope is lost. They've got Koala on this life stealer, just free farming away down here in the bottom lane. Marana's spent a lot of time roaming around, and that makes Koala our last hit leader, 30 and 4. He already has phase boots and a ring of Basilius. Interesting. You don't see that item on life stealer all too frequently. Yeah, not too frequent on life stealers, but it's a lot of. Um, it's a thing a lot of safe lane carries like to do because it allows them to manipulate the creep equilibrium. I always have problems with the wood equilibrium, but equilibrium. yeah, it's Walla. a tough one. Yeah, it's uh, it gives him nice armor, it gives him six damage. The mana region will be nice for supports. It's minor, but the the most important thing is the bonus armor to help push the creep wave when you need it, and I think that's the most uh most important thing about the ring of Basilius. So I see Chinese carries pick it up, Southeast Asian ones as well, uh, but I'm not too sure if it's done in the Western scene. It could be a Southeast Asian habit, but yeah. I've seen it. Um, even on heroes that don't usually pick it up. If it's a safe lane storm, they will do it as well, so mm -hmm. there's that. But they're yeah. now going to steal Enchantress's stack here, which will make him a little bit mad. I know I'll be mad, but now the Blink Dagger is on uh, is on Pelosa, and it's five minutes in. He has a Blink Bear. Dagger. Wow. That tier one. NFR, oh, there's a Speed Aura as well. This is Shackle. No, oh, what's happening? He lifts up onto the uh, Rubik, but now Gehenna, he's gonna pay for it instead. I'm lagging, I'm not sure about yeah, you. Same uh, they smack Gehenna down, there yeah. is a pause. Looks Lag, like we got a... you say, is lag kill. Looks like we picked a good server here. Yeah, Scythe can't play fair here, must kill with lag. Same, same C server. Me too. All right, so we'll give it a moment here. I, I'm the official admin, which is uh, scary here, Lysander. Oh, uh, do you pick C? Yeah, I picked Singapore. Okay. Well, that should be the C servers. I'm disconnecting right now. Well, as usual, uh, doing a stellar job in maintaining the server. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, kind of unfortunate here. I'm uh, I'm kind of a, a tournament admin noob. It's not my uh, not my forte. Gods gave me a little rundown right before we started, so. Got to remember. I, I'm so used to, they told me, don't talk in all chat as a spectator. It's rude. So now it's like my job to talk in all chat. Yeah, so rude, Tyree. I know, I know. It's not, not good. All right, looks like we'll resume here, but uh, that pause might be enough to keep Timbersaw alive. Yeah, it looks like, well, fixed the lag issue at least. Looks like uh, they gave Sparky the Wonder Hamster a few more... Uh, a few more pellets of grain and he'll keep that hamster wheel rolling, but oh wow, Puck, he gets smacked in the face by an arrow. And uh, Miracle had another one to the scoreboard there after the pause. So, oh, well, good uh, news for Miracle. I was thinking about um, arrows and Puck, you know, Puck maybe or Houdini, but he doesn't get out, he doesn't dodge the arrow, he dies anyway. So, yeah. it's nice and, well, Hannah is 
Well, every time I look at his glove, it disappoints me, so. He could still go into a Dagon, I mean... I mean, he's still got that Null Talisman. He's got to get the Midas so he can get the Dagon faster. That's what's going to happen here, Lysander. Not all hope is lost, but uh, Invisibility Rune here from the six-minute mark picked up by Miracles Marana. If someone ports in, but there are four heroes now. It's yeah. a bad idea. So I like what RRQ is doing. They, they know they're behind the early game, so they decide to... Yeah, they're gonna push. They fade ball. They nuke down the wave, and they're gonna try and get some towers, get a return in the goal. They really lost one tier one themselves. It's gonna stop at this wave, but now we'll see if Miracle gets a cheeky deny. And I think if someone TPs down, he can really get a kill. He's got a thousand gold. Hasn't spent it at all. They're not even gonna push it. They're gonna back up, and it'll be a four-man smoke in the jungle. And they're either gonna wrap around and try to go back bottom, or move into the mid lane. It's sort of an odd play from RRQ, but yeah, they're gonna go mad. There's the infest bomb inside of Puck. And they're looking for an opening. Scythe have rotated into the high ground here near the Dire Ancients. And Paulison, as we mentioned right before the pause, he's now level 6, has Stampede, but he had that super early Blink Dagger. So what happens when you get a first blood and a tower kill within the first 5 minutes. Radiance means you can have a ridiculous... Basically, he basically had that Blink Dagger before he had Stampede, which is and absurd. And is gonna take it upon himself, take a tier 2 as well with the Serpent Wards. And with a Siege Creep at the back of it, I think he's got it. I don't think they'll be here in time to save this tower. Where does Shebix get out? Uh, gets out is another story Radiance altogether. But I think even if he dies here, yeah, it'll be worth it. The orb comes. Radiance Shebix, you're being really greedy, my friend. Really greedy. The wards could have done it themselves, but now he's gonna feed his life away. And this is one of those kind of things. Oh, that Moonlight are, Shadow! Are, Moonlight Shadow is so bad. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, NFR on that timber saw. He won't catch a break. He gets hoof stomped, arrowed, and he'll send him back to the grave. Nature's Prophet finds a kill on the Life Stealer as well. Was that yeah, a Wrath of, of Nature? Serpent, because of Serpent Wants, yeah, and oh. the Wrath of Nature's... Koala was busy <laughs> farming the Serpent, so... Hail Hydra! Oh my gosh, that is just adding insult to injury. They get a Tier 2 Tower kill, the Shadow Shaman survives, they kill the Centaur in the mid... Or they, uh, they kill the Timber in the mid lane, and then they kill the Position 1 with a Wrath of Nature. It doesn't get better than that, Lysander. Scyther yeah, counting I, I, their I, I blessings. If the Rasta would wrap around to shock him again, because he was dropping real low with the Serpent Wards. And I don't think he'll go for Midas now. Um, it looks like he's saving money, but I think he should go for Armlet. I think that's the only choice. All in and just push. But yeah. I mean, I guess they could sit back and relax. But with the pressure Scythe, uh, Scythe is applying, it might be a little bit dangerous. With the Rasta Wards, if you're caught out with a Midas at the wrong timings, so you can't fight. And you may be rich, but you are a dead rich man. And yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's already so... Uh, it's only nine minutes, but they've already lost uh, two towers. And I, I think Scythe will continue to be aggressive with pushing, given that they have a Nature's Prophet and an Enchantress. They need to be in fighting shape. And Lysander, how come these teams don't like to get mech? What is it about SEA Dota and their, their boycotting of the mechanism? We haven't uh, seen a mech yet this series, and I don't think that we will this game either. You usually get mech on, well, when you need to timing push and you want to ward off a lot of the early burst damage. I, I don't have a proper reason for this, but I guess in this game it's because there's an AA on RRQ. Uh, they feel that maybe it's unnecessary to stampede comes. No, oh, nope, they're going to stomp in there. It does get Don Shuan. Don Shuan gets double edge and an arrow in the behind and the butterfly will drop. But nope, it's not over yet. To the ice blast though. Ooh, nope, attack misses up the high ground, so he will not shatter from this. Also, uh, uh, oh, I'll they're going to reinitiate. Boo Boo, he gets caught. <gasps> He's going to die here. So gonna feed him. Too brave. Yeah. And now, uh oh, we'll see Hana maybe in some trouble. Koala joining the party. He'll try and TP out, but that's not happening. And NRF, he finds some vengeance. He gets a double kill. But oh, I'm in the tower. This is a death. Star Storm, yep. Tower will strike in town. <laughs> Miracle, oh man, what a player. He's going for Midas. He's going to drop here, though. No magic stick, and that's what caught. Well, that's what'll cost you your life. Uh, but still, he gets another kill on the hard carry. So that's nice. Four and eight. Scythe do a little bit of a bone into RRQ's court. But yeah, like I said, AA uh, does discourage the use of mechanism. But I don't know why RRQ might not want to pick up one. I guess they don't have a proper carrier. Timbersaw could get it, but with how he's so behind, I don't think you want him to... Well, maybe not now. He's got nearly 2,000 gold. Maybe he'll get it, but they don't have proper mech carriers and things. That's one of the biggest problems. And yeah. sometimes you just... You're just plain lazy. You want your core items. You want your four star first, and yeah, that's the that's good reason enough not to want. Yeah. Get a mech. I mean, 
I, I don't know. I mean, you're right about Ancient Apparition kind of uh, de-incentivizing the mech, but it's still good. There's still that window where the Ice Blast debuff has expired and Ice Blast is still on cooldown. So you have to be more careful about when you use it, but you can always just save it till after Ice Blast expires and then just pick up your team. I mean, I, I don't know if Ancient Apparition alone is a good enough reason not to get a mech just by himself, but... I don't know, I mean, it's usually the time when mech isn't that useful is when there's no early team oh, fighting. And and these ends up. Yep. Oh, so oh down bottom, Jean Juan. Or, <laughs> I said it wrong. Don, Don Juan. <laughs> Get picked off. Don, 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 Don Juan. Oh, boy. But, uh, yeah, they find a pretty easy kill on Puck. And, yeah, in the mid, they'll pressure this tier 1 tower as well. Ice Blast. Gonna sting, but I think freedom. Yeah, he's gonna back off now. So the Dark Troll Summoner. Tower deny. For his uh yo oh, the stare down and the Trians with his prick it with his brunch and that's gonna be that four yeah. nine. That's uh three tier ones down. There's a big wrap around you. Here comes a mad horse, but Boo Boo is gonna get out of there inside. But no, the steel with the stampede as well is gonna keep him out. And now Boo Boo just right clicking Polis on. There's the Chakram slowing him down. He's dropping real low. The good Hustam will stop the Timbersaw from advancing any further. The Moonlight Shadow is going to be applied here. And now they drop a sentry ward. They know. Here comes your coil. Maybe the signs of Polis on. But he's a chicken. And a very dead chicken at that. Here comes all the serpents. They're going to be shooting down Gehenna. Well, it looks like the Rasul loses life. And the serpent walls are just going to be a little bit of a space denial here. Farm by Koala, but maybe he not. He might. Be afraid of what happened the last time, he's gonna try and dodge it this time, and yeah, he'll be fine. He pops his rage a little early. Yeah, now he's gonna be afraid. Nah, look at that. Be afraid, my friend, but there is no wrath. So, he'll be yeah. fine. Scythe still hanging on to a pretty big gold lead. It's uh, 4 to nil in tower count, but the experience graph actually pretty darn close to even. RRQ doing pretty well in these team fights. And uh, I think Scythe and it may need to slow down their aggression a little bit, mostly just because they have two hands of Midas, one on the Marana and one on the Nature's Prophet. So they are not really in fighting shape right now. Hana does have his Shadow Blade complete, the ad uh, amulet sitting uh, back at home, waiting for him in the base. But I think they need to pump the brakes a little bit here, Lysander. They're just uh, biting off a little bit more than they can chew. They need to wait for Miracle to get, uh, get something after this hand of Midas. Looks like he'll be grabbing a Yasha up next. Yeah, I think Stampede, uh, letting, uh, letting Stampede get stole, uh, stolen there was a little bit of a misplay. Yeah. Uh, it could have popped Stampede and then blinked to Hoof Storm, which makes it really tough to steal. Uh, but yeah, he should have stomped the Rubik anyway. Wow. And, and Rubik Gehenna, also stole the Rubik wards. Play, good play on him, yeah. So he's going to get a tier 1 tower out of this. There's 3 quarters of the health uh, left on that tower, but he might just dump it and be done with it. And he has a steal to follow up as well, so he really wants to get rid of this spell. And it's gonna be good for pushing this tower. Rubik has been playing good this game. Uh, now drop the wards, so look at that. Yep. Ro or, uh, <laughs> Rasta. Well, Rubik Rasta with the big plays so far this game. Rasta has a blink, so that's yep. gonna be pretty good. Oh, they trapped Don Shuan. Don Shuan in trouble. The horse stamps on his face, and Enchantress will sting him with that spear. And now they'll farm up the wards on their, on their own side, and Ice Blast is gonna just shave them a little bit. But Boo Boo, um, level 7. Only level 1 of the Ice Blast, so not too much damage coming yeah. through. Still a good repel from Scythe. They find another kill on Puck, and they get that extra bit of farm, and still their tower has plenty of hit points left, not even close to deny range. So still another victory for the Dire side. They're holding on to a pretty solid net worth lead. Net, uh, net profit. Nature's profit at about 7k, so he is still farming his little heart out, the Centaur. He's looking feisty. That's a force staff now to go with his blink dagger. And yeah, boss. What's this? Yeah. Want this life steal? You are chicken. No, he pops the omelet though, so that's nice. Drops the double edge first. I like that. Keeps it on cooldown. Hoop storm as well. No chance at all. And when you're disabled that long, I think omelet hurts you more than <laughs> yeah. it helps. So for sure. Six eleven now. And Scythe uh, looking pretty good in this best of five game number three. One more and they take this in a clean sweep. Yep. But of course, uh, RRQ does have to battle late game, so it could happen either way. But I think the way things are looking, this Life Stealer is 0 and 3. So yeah, and, and there's a deny. Yeah, that's been the name of the game for RRQ this series. For some reason, it just seems to be that whoever is their position one carry gets the short end of the stick. For a while, it was uh, it was liking in the first two games, and here in game three, it's the Life Stealer, and all three games, he's been pretty quiet, trying to farm up, and then eventually just gets picked off and doesn't really yeah. find any map objectives. I, I don't know. It doesn't seem to really fit into their play style. The very late blink from uh, blink from Don Shuan. Um, I, don't, I don't think Puck is his hero now that I look at it. It's not like he's been 
having a bad time. Uh, I mean, they didn't really gank his lane, now they go in, they drop the nice blast, but they already have the Aegis here. This could be a big mistake, and it is! The puck is dead. RQ, NFR gets two kills with the Timber Chain, but now he's gonna get, uh, he's gonna be in a little bit of trouble. The arrow will fly, Lance on Miracle, but Rubik, he throws it back. He will pop the Aegis on Miracle. Now Freedom trying to run away, he is now gonna be touched and brought down. Koala, now gonna be chased down by Miracle here. Chibix, he has a blink, he's gonna turn this guy into a chicken. The Rat Nature, well timed, and a Shadow Blade Strike will kill him. No, actually not. Uh, it was just a normal right click, and they will get the pickoffs here. Gehanna, they might actually Raven's snatch him. Uh, there is a TP cooldown. Oh no, Hannah wants him. This is aggressive seed order. What's that? Trees in your face. More trees. Stay in the trees. An arrow in the Raven's face. But Hannah will die for this. Cancel aggro. Cancel aggro. Oh. Like, you get out of that. And he pops the Shadow Blade. Rats on out. And we'll see if there's a headshot moment right here. He cancels that. Oh, nearly gets turned into a chicken. And that would have been another death. Oh, hey, ult flies. It's close. But just slightly off the mark. It's enough to get the Shatter as it flies through him. Nicely done by the Sniper Rifle from Boo Boo. And that'll send Hana right back to the well. Still, big team fight for Scythe. He stayed there for so long, actually. Yeah, he didn't have a TP. It was on cooldown. All right. So he didn't really have too many choices. He was just trying to hide in the trees, I but um, that yeah. was a double, nice snipe, double burn, or yeah. freeze. So, oh, yeah. Paulison, he stampedes. Oh, he blinks forward. Nice face shift from Don Juan, but is it enough? It doesn't look like it. One more. He'll axe him down. But now Boo Boo's inbound. Garen comes the timber saw, and he'll pay for his aggression. That'll be a one for one in the mid lane. Centaur for the puck. Oh, at this point, I don't think it's that big a deal. You're not slowing down Stink Dagger. You're throwing more XP over to the XP staffed heroes, I think. Let me check the XP or the hero levels. Yeah, uh, actually not so bad. Um, the levels are pretty balanced. Uh, one or two missing here and there, but otherwise pretty balanced. So not too big a deal in that, mm -hmm. in that sense of the word. But now NFR, he is going for Bloodstone, so there will be no mech for this game. Yeah, no, no mech. Classic SEA Dota here, Lysander. It's just an item they don't like. Uh, pains me a little bit, just as it pains you to see this Nature's Prophet not getting a dag on. Uh, I love mech, one of my favorite items. I just don't understand why teams don't buy it. You like mech? It's so good, how can you not like mech? It's an easy build up, the items that you build up give you some utility and lane. It's ro really, really good, it's cheap. It's like one of the most cost effective items in the game, man. And it's cute. Yeah, but it doesn't have any of that oomph power. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, it ain't no Dagon, I'll give you that. It doesn't have that same laser yeah, level, but... You don't like, oh, the mech just wrecks the team. You know, you don't hear <laughs> mech and wreck in the team. I, mean, I guess you can. Um, yeah. They pop the mech, but still get wrecked. But, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's true, awesome. but I still I still like it. I don't know. It's it's just such a... It's, it's, their own. I think mech has a lot of backstory to things. Yeah. Like how, how the both items. Oh, Mikasa gets dusted up. Miracle, I mean. And now the Yorb will catch him. He snaps the call as well. And now Don Chuan. He is a chicken, a shackle chicken. Chibix is so brave. He's going to dodge it. Dodge the right click here. Don Chuan will get out way in time. Forced up with the big bad horse. Gonna double edge him. And that's another death for the puck. He does get a kill on Miracle here. So 13 to 17. But they lose one for one once again. And Boo Boo. He's in a lot of trouble himself. The Wrath of Nature will come across. Hannah will get another kill. Uh, ending killing spree as well. Boo Boo. No, he made a boo-boo by stinking around for too long. And yeah. extra silence for Hannah. So, there's yep. that. So a good read from RQ though. They saw, I, I, I guess they saw like Moonlight Shadow get casted with this sword right here. They had a pretty good idea that Marana was inbound and they dusted straight away. If they hadn't dusted, that would have been a completely different fight. But Miracle just gets caught a little bit off guard. Nice heads up play and uh, they, they do capitalize. It is a two for two in the end, so it's still kind of a break even exchange. Not bad for RRQ, but not particularly bad for Scythe either. And now more big items are coming out. Centaur has himself the cloak, which will probably turn into a Hood of Defiance. There's now an Orchid out for the Nature's Prophet, so he's getting scarier. And X Freedom, he's got those Corn Chantress items, Medallion, Urn, and now a Ghost Scepter. So no Ags out quite yet, but... Well on his way. Now Morana going with that casual Yasha and into a Mithril Hammer. I wonder. Probably a BKB coming out for Miracle. Oh. But woohoo in the mid. Puck just being cheeky. Will jaunt back to the orb. Nature attend us. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was being a little bit too high here. Maybe still high from 420. But <laughs> that's an Invis rune on bottom lane. So this could set up something huge. It certainly could. I like could. this four-staff Blink Dagger sensor. He just blows fools up. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. The first time I saw it, I was like, yeah, is the Force Staff really necessary? But it just gives him so much uh, so much more utility. Now he can blink in, hoof stomp, and then have an escape. Or he can blink in, hoof stomp, and if they hop away, he's got another gap closer. So he either lives or he just stays on top of you. And uh-oh, they'll scout out this life stealer here. And he'll be forced to blink. Do they have a gem? No, they have... Oh, yes, they do. Gem on the Rubik. So, all right. He does back out in plenty of time. And no, Halosa now switching to a little bit more defensive items, uh, gets the pipe so he can smoke while going to battle, reducing some of the damage coming in as well, and the Wrath Major will hit them so they know they're being squatched. Um, oh, that's a trend. So they'll think it's that, but no, it's a big bad bait. Pelosan, he's gonna wreck him down, but four stuff. TP away. Where are your stun, son? But there he is, the coil. Gonna bring him down, and once again, Simbasol being invaluable at destroying uh, the sense of War Runner. And don't try and waste the pack of smoke because he does have the gem now. I think that was delivered. No, that was not. Um, okay, that was kind of a funny player there, but <laughs> don't try. He miscalculated the. The amount of times you'll be able to right click the observer ward. So he gets one click there, he'll be back for the next two clicks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, uh, the Marana is not going BKB as I thought he would. It's going to be Yasha straight into Desolator. So Miracle, he wants to hit hard and he wants to hit hard soon. And he will start to transition into a serious carry. And even though RRQ are finding exchanges around the map, it's Scythe that have the double Midas, no hands of Midas on RRQ. So this kind of more static, one-for-one -one trading type game is really benefiting the Dire. And they'll just camp around the Roche pit. It's still going to be a while before Roche comes up, but certainly something that they'll have within their grasp. And speaking of item progression, Ancient Apparition will make me happy here. He's got a mech on the way. Headdress, buckler, halfway to the recipe. It's a little bit late, but working on it nonetheless. Bloodstone out on the timber saw, and Lifestealer now has a Skull Basher. Oh, that will help him. I think the Abyssal Blade is really important. With all the people trying to kite him, uh, right now I think... Scythe has some pretty amazing mobility here, the casual Yasha for Miracle, Dyer's it's such a value top item top I think, if you talk about value items, I think Yasha is one of them, it's so sure. satisfying to have, and, you gotta go and fast. a lot of Dyer's speed gaming, as well. but yeah, the uh, Koala, he might be the um, target of a gank, guess not, but yeah. the Miracle, he doesn't have to carry that hard, there is Hannah doing the job for him, but Miracle getting the offlane Midas it really does help him a lot, and now they're gonna wait, and... Oh, they've set the bait, and then we'll see if any fish come here to yep. get hooked. Dyer put down a nice aggressive ward here, so they will start pressuring this tier 2, and they are ready to take an engagement if RRQ choose to defend. They did finish off that top tier 1 tower, but here we've got some Rasta wards down, and this tier 2 will fall in a matter of seconds. Oh, so they'll use the glyph. Don Juan hopping in. And tower still falls. Now they'll engage onto the timber saw. He'll be the first to fall. And that's an easy kill. There is a surprise inside. Arrow off the mark as they juke it. But still a success for sight. They get a tier two tower and a free kill out of the trade. Hey, Zayori, here's a mech. Yay. Get wrecked, Yay. he's got a mech. Time to be passive aggressive. <laughs> Don't hate the mech, it's so good. Yeah, it's good, it's good. It's good. I love It'll getting help. it on low armor heroes. Yes. Like I like it on Dazzle. It's one of my favorites. But Dazzle never gets it in competitive. Dazzle Dazzle doesn't need it, I feel, and he has mana problems as well. So He doesn't need it. He does have that those are two very true statements, but I like it because it makes you so tanky, dude. You just go man mode Dazzle. You just run in, poison touch and what are they going to do? You've got God armor, you've got the heal. Uh, God's, uh, God's ever told you that I play a lot of Dazzle as well. You're a Dazzle player? No way. I play lots of Dazzle. Oh my, my god, uh, Lysander. My second most played hero. Um, second behind Zeus. Wow. Uh, it's, like we're, it's like we're brothers from another mother. Maybe. I don't have as, uh, I don't have hair as fantastic as yours, though. Oh, well, that's okay. We can work on that. You, you, can, you can grow hair. You can't grow a love for Dazzle. That's something you're just born with. Uh, I don't like how... Uh, the competitive scene has made him popular. Um, I always felt <laughs> the picking him up. So. Oh, you liked being a hipster, being that that only guy that uh, plays Dazzle. I was like, I play Dazzle, man. Yeah. Uh, I used to play it because my friend loves Pudge, and it's the best dual lane you can ever have. Dazzle oh, and Pudge. Oh yeah, that's that's a fun dual lane. Yeah, Dazzle Huskar is fun. So is Dazzle Naga. Da I'm partial to Dazzle Naga myself, but it's pretty solid. Uh oh, Polison, uh, he'll get caught with his pants down here in the Radiant Ancients, or pardon me, Radiant uh, Secret Shop. But they'll burn a lot. He uses the Stampede. And I don't think he'll survive, but he does pull a lot of cooldowns, the Dream Coil in particular. 
And now Koala gotta get silenced up, his mouth shut and now shackled up as well. Koala is so done! The wards will get him. Actually the Orchid does, so that's another kill on the life stealer. He is now 0-5. He is not making up his mind either. He is going for a Basher slash Blats kind of build, which is weird because you, I think Basher alone is not going to do his job. I mean, the Bashers are nice, you pray to RNGs, you hope you get the Bash, but you really need that Abyssal to just blow someone up with the, yeah. when you come out of puck. That's what you need. Abyssal that guy, chop him up, and then move on to another target. At least guarantee a kill. But with this Vlads, I mean, cool, you can Roshan, but that's about it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. The 5 armor is kind of cute, but I don't think that's the main problem for them right now. Yeah. And I don't know, it's pretty suspect picking this up. 100% agreed, my friend. Marana has the Desolator complete, and now Miracle is working towards the Manta. He's got uh, the orb uh, on the way and just pulling up for the recipe. Roshan has respawned now. Miro will slap him with an arrow, and they should be able to do this pretty easily. Chibi does not have Serpent Wards, but they don't need it. They've got a Medallion on the Enchantress, and they've got level 4 Untouchable. No reason they can't take down Roche quickly. It doesn't seem that RRQ are too privy to it. They'll shoot an Ice Blast to scout it out. Now they know, but I don't think they're in a position to contest. Roche will fall before they can even get here. Down he goes. Aegis of the Immortal goes the way of Miracle. And now Scythe can make the escape. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, for a offlane Mirana, that's a pretty, pretty stacked one. So the Cat Lady is pretty rich. Mm -hmm. And they might find Koala here again if he continues. Continues his jungle adventures and now oh looks like Donchuan will be the target of choice. He has a gem, hello! And kaboom! And he's in a lot of trouble. Maybe not. Chibik's a little bit slow on the blink. And now Enerfar with the PKB does a stampede. Everyone's running around at 5 2 2, but nope, Centaur is gonna fall down right away. Uh, the Dark Troll Summoner tried to have a piece of that life stealer instead, got a piece torn out of him. And now Don Schwan invests in there, he's gonna try and get a coil. Miracle could be in trouble. He pops the coil immediately. Smart move in this case. And Koala is gonna get silenced. The fairy dust in his eyes. He cannot see and he will not see for the next 39 seconds. Miracle is gonna run away. Will he get out? He does have ages though. I don't know how far Don Schwan wanna go. That really wants to commit to this. They could try and break it. I think they're diving a little bit too far here. Now there goes your Aegis. And there's a Mask of Madness on Koala. I mean, it's I'm all, all for anti-kiting, but that is not gonna help, I think. But Don Shuan, he's now a chicken. He's in a lot of trouble. This is a dead chicken. Gets double-edged up. Poloson with a good buyback, but now becomes a dieback. So it's still 2 to 1, but no, they're gonna catch an arrow. Boo Boo will catch an arrow. Nature's Prophet will poke him with the flower, and he will go down. NFR still on the run there. 23 seconds, but Gehanna is a pig, and everyone just turning to animals here, and they kill each other. And the gem is returned actually. Scythe don't lose the gem. No, actually, they pick up the pup's gem, and yeah. So the fight actually goes to. I wouldn't say Scythe, they did force a buyback on Centaur. Um, they had Miracle lose his Aegis, but overall, I think it was pretty even. No one sees the gem, of course, but oh no, the courier does. Yeah, so. they see it. They're just gonna put it in the courier. But yeah, that was a really chaotic <laughs> Golden fight. Bitch, Roshan. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, we dude. have scammers in sight. Is that so. the uh, is that the courier that's worth like an absurd amount of money? Not not as absurd. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the one. Or is it is the, the platinum life? the really the really yeah. good one? The platinum is the new one, but the golden one is more expensive because it's rarer. How much uh, is this thing worth? Like uh, thousands. Oh, uh, yeah, I think thousands. The, the, the gold one sold for 10,000. The, the, the um, platinum one is about 2005, I think, when it first came out. A little too rich for my blood, Lysander. Uh, yeah. I'll stick with my naked Greeble, thanks. I hate that hero. <laughs> You're the only one that likes it, so... I know, that's it's the same reason you used to like Dazzle. I, I love it. Every time I like, stream and I use that courier, people are just like, What? Naked Greeble? It's so cute. He shakes his little butt. It's the cutest little thing I've ever seen. Anyway... Yeah. Scythe, uh, they actually come out ahead in that fight. They do burn one buyback, and it was the Centaur, and ended up being a dieback as he got picked off. But the Marana and Nature's Prophet, they cleaned it up. They took out the trash, and that Scythe of Ice on Shrine's Hana really oh, coming in handy. Oh, a Jedi sense in the bomb lane. He nearly got shot there by the arrow. Hmm, almost. Just decided that, ah, oh, wait, I forgot to pick up something from this store, and now he's going to go for the side shop. Nope. No, actually, no. He's just running to push. What an awkward moment right now. Miracle leaps in uh, just as he runs. And the Stampede will be used defensively. He's going to try to run away. Hannah will pick off the lifesteal. Nope. Close on. Uh, works to take a fall here. Koala. Going to get bash? Nope. No bash. So RNGs is not on his side. But now NFR, he is in a lot of trouble. I'm not sure why he was there. I thought he was going to pick up a TP. But it... I think it... I don't know. I think he wasn't looking at his hero. There was an arrow that just barely hit him. 
and yeah. he decides to just stick around. Maybe he wasn't watching his hero and just thinking, okay, maybe I'll just push and clicks on the map instead. So yeah, so now Scythe, they're gonna further their lead here. About fifteen thousand gold, twelve thousand experience, uh -huh. and oh, awesome. oh yeah, wow, so two shots to Rubik. Yeah, wow. I, I I was gonna say, oh, I caught the tail end of it. I caught the second auto attack. So <laughs> that's all. I, Jesus, dude, this nature's prophet. He is a meat stick. And uh, RQ, they've picked up another gem. There's already a gem on the courier that Scythe stole. They had one of their own, and now uh, Ancient Apparition has one sitting in his safety deposit box. So maybe Scythe can grab themselves a third gem, take a couple trophies home with them, and um, we'll see how it works. Looks like they do want to group up in the mid. They've got Rost Awards available, and there's only one outer tower remaining. And Scythe have it in their sights, or maybe not. They will just retreat, so never mind. Well, we'll see if they decide to wait for the next rush, which is uh, something very miracle to do. Uh, it could also be a little more YOLO. We'll so see. A miracle uh, but play, Shadow just wait for rush. Is 200 away from Academ Scepter, so maybe they wait a little bit. Yeah, and he's also level 15, so Ags plus the level 16 ultimate. Uh, pretty, pretty big, and I'm getting some more lag here. Hopefully this server wakes up. Uh, I'm fine so uh, far. Okay. It's probably maybe, just me then. Maybe it's because you're in the US. So. Yeah, connecting with those cables running under the ocean. Marana mm -hmm. working towards an assault Karas. Not too often you see that, but Miracle, he wants to knock down these towers even more quickly, get a little bit of armor for his team, make those Rost Awards a bit more potent. He is the master of minus armor this game. Desolator, AC, and Manta will be the first three item choices for the Marana. Very interesting. Yep, he'll be stripping you literally with his arrows. So. <laughs> Piercing through that armor. Oh, speaking of armor, I gotta watch Game of Thrones. Oh man, now I know what I'm doing this morning. I I, I don't know. I don't watch that show because Jesus. I'm just gonna wait uh, wait till everything has passed. Uh, <laughs> wait for everything to die down so I don't get spoiled. You're, so you're even a if I hear spoilers now, I will not ever have that problem. So because oh. I'll forget them by the time I saw it. All so. right, all right. That's that's not a bad. That's kind of what I did with Harry Potter. I uh, I saw the movies. I had no idea that Snape was gonna oh, kill Harry Dumbledore. Harry Potter was spoiled the time. Uh, was spoiled already because you already read the books. So I didn't read the books though. Like a visual fulfillment, I guess. That's people okay. people had told me that Dumbledore got killed by Snape, but it just didn't click. I was watching the Half Blood Prince at midnight in the movie theater, and like as soon as it happened, I I'm not gonna lie. I had to go to the bathroom and change my undies. I I was so surprised. It I'm glad I didn't read the books after that. Ever since then, I've been like, you know what? I, it's nice to not be spoiled sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. I'm glad uh, memory is not so good sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. If you remember every spoiler that comes your way, it just ruins your life. But I think the most lucky people are the people that watch, uh, that get, that have not watched Star Wars and get to watch it from episode one oh, uh, instead yeah. of episode four. I think that's a pretty new experience. It is. It's it's weird to explain to them like why the like why why the graphics drop off so much. Like Yoda's like walking around and doing backflips, and then you see him and he can't even move. But yeah, it's it's cool to see the story like continue continue like that. It's uh, I did that with my ex girlfriend. She'd never seen Star Wars, and we watched the episodes in order, and it was pretty neat. It was the first time I ever actually watched the episodes in order as well. And oh, we got another lag spike here. I would I would do that with my kids. Yeah, my kids. Yeah, probably. But it's still a while before they will be well will be in this world so I guess it's gonna be a while but the servers I think are lagging again I think that's yeah, yeah well, that's why yeah, Miracle is gonna call lag and it's 2027 Scythe uh, they have a 20,000 gold lead so pink spike and all that yep we'll just wait it out I guess hashtag Singapore you're from Singapore right Lysander yep we have great internet here yeah how do you like it? Is it nice? Is it no, a fun place to live? Fantastic. Aside uh, from the internet? It's a, I mean, I have good internet. I have a 200 Mbps. Jesus. How do, how do you... <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not... It's, I think the servers are not hosted by a Singaporean company. Oh, uh, okay. So it's eClub Malaysia, so I think it's not a Singaporean company. I don't know about you. What do you think? What do I think about Singapore? Now, what do you think about Ecop Malaysia? I don't know. It sounds like a non-Singaporean brand. Yeah, I mean that sounds non-Singaporean. I don't know. I've I've never been to that part of the world, but I did use to contract with uh, Garena in Singapore when they were doing Han stuff. I guess they uh -huh. still do Han stuff, but that's my only only interaction with uh, with SEA Esports. But yeah, Singapore is a nice place to. I think my my take on it. I mean, there are a lot of things about Singapore, but um, it's 
kind of competitive to live here. Um, it's uh, pretty one track in terms of education, you know. But <laughs> otherwise, you can have a good time as a holidayer or a tourist. So I've tourists heard it's one of the safest country. places in the world. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's very safe. Uh, it comes with minor disadvantages, but I don't. I don't think it affects me that much. I think the police are reason are reasonable people. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, that's nice. It's a nice place for holidaying. I think that that's the best, uh, especially <laughs> when you come from a cold part of the world. But yeah. speaking of uh, cold, they're about to ice miracle right here, and uh, they miss. So yeah, they won't yes. find it. But an RQ, no. RQ, they want to be a little aggressive here, and we're at that it's point where it's sort of just a farm fest. There's one outer tower remaining in sight. They've got the Midas advantage, so really there's no pressure on sight. They can sit back and just keep on farming. They've got the carry edge and. This whole time, as we've been talking about Harry Potter and Singapore, the gold and experience lead has just been furthering for Scythe. So they're just farming away. We didn't miss much, folks. And RRQ, they're trying to find some kills. They need to make some plays happen. But Scythe are doing a good job being elusive and not making their their plight too easy here. Assault Karas is also now complete on the Marana. So that's uh, a little oh, bit scary. Oh, they're going to look for Hannah here. Oh, Hannah gets Abyssal. Yeah, that's what, this is why I say you need Abyssal. And Hannah will finally lose his life. Wow, big bounty for the life stealer as well. Wow, he has invested for that long. <laughs> he pops right out and goes back in. So. <laughs> right, that's about 800 gold going the way of life stealer, so that's huge. Yeah, and the Serpent Wars take a huge chunk out of the tower's life. So. Oh yeah, that top tier 3. So Scythe still finding uh, finding advantages all around the map. Roshan, I think, yep, he's respawned now. So if Miracle was waiting for Rosh, we may see Scythe. Retreat back towards the pit and try and secu uh, secure a kill there. They may want to wait for their nature's profit to come up before they do that. Rost Awards will be down for another 70 seconds. He's more than halfway to level 16, but he does now have the Agnim Scepter. So that is pretty big for Scythe, but ooh, Shiva's Guard now out on the Timber Saw. Yeah, it's a pretty common pickup. I mean, especially since you do zip into battle pretty often. And it helps you push out lanes as well. It gives you a good bit of armor, which you desperately need. You cannot rely on reactive armor only. And, well, you might seem get a blink dagger, but usually when you there is a blink dagger, this is some balls here from RRQ. Certainly is. Uh, Rubik did steal oh, the wards. Oh, but look at this. Jedi pulls on. They want to do it. The It'll hit Roche. That actually does RRQ a favor. How do they not favor. see this? How do they not see this? Really? Gana's gonna get forced up himself on the high ground. What is he doing? I don't know. Maybe he thought, hey, I would keep it cute here. But no, the stealing from Miracle. He's such a thief, but the cheese goes to Koala. And now they forced up. And, hey, buddy, how'd you do? And they have a little <laughs> bit of a. A little bit of a moment there in the trees, the four-legged creatures, but now follows on a little bit disgusted by the Enchantress. Got to blink forward and take the kill on Life Stealer, but Miracle steals it instead. NFR, did he buy back? No, he did not. So now he's going to back off the arrow. Arrow, no, no, not going to happen. So, uh -oh. Mac doesn't do you a lot of good if you're not there to use it. And yeah, they stomp him, NFR. Silence up, shut your mouth. But the BK becomes a little bit late. He's just going to try and run away. The Desolator Strike will kill him. So Mega Kill. And that rush attempt did not go well. They got the Aegis kill. Yeah. Uh, they lose it. The Miracle loses his Aegis, but they steal it. And yeah, Jesus so used the spell, so that was pretty much just gold in the EXP. Yeah. RRQ did get the last hit on Roche, so that is one thing that went their way. But So the Aegis went the way of Miracle, and then the Cheese went the way of RRQ. So they did get more than they lost out of it, but in the end, they got cleaned up. And Cheeky plays to get four staff up to the high ground, but ultimately RRQ in big trouble. They don't have a glyph available. Rost awards come down, and that's the end of the tier three tower in the mid lane. This will probably be Rax. Timbersaw and Lifesteal are dead for another ten seconds. The melee Rax will fall. Polison four stabs himself back, and yeah, it's looking like it will maybe be a 3-0. They'll have forward. John Juan gets obliterated, as does the Rubik. Now they're diving into the tier fours. Boo Boo getting blasted by the Desolator. Uh, Shadow Shaman falls as NFR comes in, but they'll find some vengeance for their fallen cop. Red. They'll send him back to the well. Koala, now the lone defender. A lot of low health heroes. Can he do it? He'll get the kill onto Miracle, but they will avenge their Marana. Now, NFR, he buys back. He's hungry, and it looks like there might be some canned centaur for dinner. No! Oh, nope. God! Nope. The timber chain right off the mark. What a disaster for the timber saw. Oh, oh Chakram just... off the mark. Uh oh. Paulson's just playing with his food now. Yeah, but. Radiance you know what, Zayori? What? Lysander. They popped the mech and got wrecked. Ah, oh, they did. The mech was not enough to save him. Oh, Koala, getting de He's getting de roped with the AC and Desolator, and I think that's game. Full team wipe, lots of diebacks, 3-0 for Scythe. Easy game, easy life. Uh, miracle. 
Surprising. Uh, I guess Life Dealer is not that big a threat if you, you kite him, and I think that's what uh, Scythe really did uh, very well. So, yeah. So, RRQ. They are supposed to be the they are supposed to be the best uh, team in Filipino Philippines right now. Mm -hmm. So oh, falling a little bit short here. I would have expected a bigger yeah. fight with the way Gods has been praising them, but yeah. in the end, uh, Scythe the Miracle. Or, I mean, it's the experience uh, from a couple of TI veterans as well on his team. Oh, well, not a couple, just uh, Freedom, but. Yeah, I mean, lots of Scythe were the, the heavy favorites coming in. According to Dota 2 Lounge, the bets were like 75-25, yeah, 73% in favor of Scythe. So not too many rares were lost today, and they took the series 3-0. So it was a best of five, could have been a longer day, but uh, only three quick matches. Lysander joining me for game three. That means we will see Scythe in the finals of the inaugural. Very exciting for them, but um, Lysander, it's always a pleasure, man. We got to cast together more. Too bad yeah. we're on different time zones. Uh, yeah, that's why I've been staying up late a lot. Using only Hearthstone to keep me awake. Oh, no. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was fun. I mean, we, we could cast more when I head down to the studio. I mean, okay. we have a lot of time. Deal, deal. I'll hold you to it. So that wraps up our coverage today, guys. We'll leave the stream running for a little while with some tunage here. But um, that's it for us today. Make sure you follow us both on Twitter, at TV and at Lysander. How do you say that second half of your name? Uh, Lysander Zenora. Zenora. Okay. Is that like an online name or is that your, your real last name? No, nah, it's not my real last name. It's, uh, it's uh, a name I made up. up. Stuck with it. For oh, a that's cute. So our Twitters are in the uh, title of the broadcast. I'm sure Lysander will link his as it's a little more difficult to spell. But that's it for us. We're out of here, guys. Take care. Be kind to yourselves and be kind to each other. We'll see you tomorrow for more coverage of the inaugural. Love and Kappa. Love and Kappa.